Well, hello there. How are you doing today? Do you feel like doing more spring decor DIYing with me? Well, come on in. Let's get started. What do I have going on for you for today? Well, I was feeling inspired with some of those neutral spring DIYs that I just did. So I figured, heck, why not do more? Dollar Tree's got a ton of fun things to DIY with for the spring season, so I'm not done yet. So I'm gonna quit my Gavin, let's jump into it, and let's do more Dollar Tree spring DIYing on a budget because we still got time. Why not? Let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll wanna stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. If you're interested in being featured as a crafter of the day in one of my videos, submit a picture of one of your recreations of a DIY that I've done to either Facebook or Instagram. If you want to DM it to me, you can. Then you just simply have to look out for the end of each video to see if it's your DIY that I will be featuring in that given video. Alrighty, so getting started for this DIY, if you didn't get the stand-up plaque from Michaels, you're gonna need four of these long plaques that you can get at Dollar Tree. They've got these long plaques in different styles for different seasons. On the back side, you've got a blank canvas. So that's the side you wanna use. So when putting this together, you're gonna flip it over to the front side and using some jumbo popsicle sticks, you're gonna glue these plaques together to make a wider canvas, right? I'm not gonna do it because I've got my stand. I just wanted to show you what you're gonna do. Two of these plaques isn't enough because we want it taller. The stand I have is three feet tall. So by taking four of the Dollar Tree plaques and putting them together, you're not only gonna get a nice long plaque stand, but it's longer than this stand here that I got at Michael's. This stand here is double-sided and it's about three feet tall. So in comparison to the four plaques that you're putting together at Dollar Tree, you're getting a longer plaque at Dollar Tree and a wider one. But if you wanna cut it, just go ahead and cut about 10 inches off and it'll be the same size. To my stand-up sign, I'm gonna start off by giving it a base coat using some of Waverly's Hazelnut. Now when applying this first coat, I'm not gonna go super thick because this base coat is going to come through the top coat that I'm gonna apply after this base coat of Hazelnut dries. Then I'm gonna go in with some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of white right over that Hazelnut and I am gonna put a very light, uneven, yep, I said uneven coat of this white chalk paint over that hazelnut because this is going to give us a nice distressed look. So you can see as I'm doing it, I'm doing real long strokes with my brush and there's gonna be an unevenness about it. I'm not gonna fill in those lighter areas because it's really gonna add some character to this. Dollar Tree has some great sandpaper. You're getting 36 in this pack by Toolbench and it comes in different grades. You're getting a little bit of everything, the light, medium, and harsh. I'm gonna go in with a medium grate and I'm just gonna sand over those lighter areas, just softening it up so it doesn't look like it was painted, like it looks like it was weathered. And just by taking that sandpaper and lightly going over those areas, you'll see just how easily it softens up and that's definitely the fine tuning and the look you want to go for. For this porch sign, I thought I'd switch things up a bit and go the route of using stencils. Stencils are a great alternative to stickers, vinyl, the Cricut, and they're reusable. For this DIY, I figured I'd start from the bottom and work my way up. And since the last letter in my word is G, because I am spelling out the word spring, I figured I'd start with that. Once I get the spacing of this first letter down, I'm pretty much good to go for the rest because I can kind of line it up with that G going all the way up. So on each side of the letter G, I'm doing two and three quarter inches from the edge, if that makes any sense. The colors that I'm using today are going to be rustic colors because this is a DIY that's going on my porch. 
but that's what's great about this DIY is it's a stencil so you can customize it to suit your decor style. That rustic green you see me use in there? Yep, it's a combination of Waverly's Fern and Hello Hobbies Cafe Brown. When you mix just a bit of brown to a color like green, it kind of mutes it out, it dulls it out, it takes that bright vibrantness away from it, and I feel like it rustics it up a bit. Rustics it up, that's a word too. Look in my dictionary, I'm positive it's there. I've used it before, haha. <laughs> These are sponge dabbers here. You get a three pack at Dollar Tree, three different sizes. That's the route you wanna go when you are applying paint to a stencil. You wanna go in the dabbing motion. You don't wanna use a paintbrush and use, I guess, brush strokes because that's when you're gonna get more bleedage. Now, I am not saying by any means when you dab, you're not gonna get some bleedage, but it will be very minimal and it is an easy fix. When applying the paint, you don't want to gob on the paint and have a lot of paint on your sponge dabber because less is more and it will cut down on the bleedage. So you just kind of want to put a light coat of paint on your sponge and just dab away. Dab, dab, dab away. Yep, that's what I'm going to do for this DIY because we're using stencils for the whole thing. I put two coats. Once my two coats are good and dry, that's when you have the all clear to remove your stencil. Do not remove it while it is wet. Now I can go ahead and place my second letter from the bottom. I like to use painter's tape to keep my stencil in place and to help so it doesn't slide around. Painter's tape is great. You can find it at Dollar Tree as well because it doesn't really stick to your project and it's not going to pull up any paint. It just does what it needs to do, and what it needs to do is keep our stencil in place. And yes, do not throw your stencil away because you can reuse it. Another helpful hint when dabbing on your paint using a stencil, if you use your fingers to kind of hold the stencil down, it will help as well prevent some of that bleedage. And for those of you who are wondering, this yellow is made up of Waverly's Maze, and again, Hello Hobbies Cafe Brown. Here's a bit of a hint, when you're dabbing that paint on, if you kind of just press down on the stencil edges there, it really does kind of help cut down on some of the bleedage. In place of the eye and spring, I'm going with the tulip. Fun, right? Yes! And the orange that I'm using is a rustic orange and it is made up of Waverly's pumpkin and again, Hello Hobbies Cafe Brown. Because this is a stencil, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in those gaps in the letter. And you will see that the P, there is some bleedage there. Although I don't show it, it is an easy fix by just going in with whatever your base color is. So in my case, it's white, and you can just kind of go over those bleedage dots there and smooth out those edges and nobody's gonna be none the wiser. Guess what? I'm gonna be using some of Dollar Tree's twine. Surprise, surprise, right? This piece definitely needs some of my twine flowers. Twine flowers are easy to do just by wrapping the twine around your fingers several times. The larger you want your flower to be, the more you're gonna space your fingers out. Once you've wrapped it around as many times as you'd like, if you take and just kinda twist your twine bunch there and make an eight, then right there in the middle, pinch it and tie it off with another piece of twine, you have got one bunch. Depending on how full or how thick you want your flower to be is how many bunches you're going to make. I typically don't do more than three, but because I'm doing a larger flower and I wrapped it around my fingers more, I only need two bunches for these flowers. I'm making three flowers, which means I need six bunches. Once I've got my bunches tied off, I'm going to go ahead and separate those loops just like so in that is why you want to twist your twine before you tie it because it kind of helps lay those bunches right or those petals right, the, the hoops right. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue these two bunches together. Mm -hmm. I've got some wood buttons here that I got at Michael's and this is the perfect finishing touch to the center of these flowers. What's great about wood buttons is you can DIY them any color. So you don't have that need of buying several different colors 
of buttons and then your buttons don't match or you don't have the right yellow or the right orange. And so by buying wood buttons, you're cutting down on what you have in your stash and you can DIY these to suit any decor piece that you're doing in any color. So in this case, I'm gonna do a button in the green, the yellow, and the orange that I'm using. Those rustic colors that I made. Three flowers were a must because I'm gonna put one at the top, in the center, and at the bottom. And yes, these flowers are not dry, or the button isn't dry. Definitely didn't have my patient pants on, but you know what? I wanted to get this done and I wanted to take some pictures. And so it worked out and now it looks amazing. So let's go take a look at this. For this spring decor piece, I picked up one bag of this reindeer moss, one bunch of baby's breath, two packs of this green floral wire, some floral foam, four packs of these butterflies, this glass candle holder, and this wood washi tape. I'm going to start this project off with the floral wire that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. And using my wire cutters, I'm going to cut seven different size pieces of wire, ranging from nine inches to four inches, because I want varying sizes for this project. Using the wood washi tape that I hauled last month from the Dollar Tree that I was so stinking excited to find, I'm going to roll it out and lay it flat, sticky side up. I'm going to take my floral wire pieces and lay it in the middle of the washi tape and just simply fold the washi tape over the wire to cover it. Giving me the look of a stick. Then I'm just going to trim up some of the tape, making it a bit neater where it didn't completely line up. An alternative to using the washi tape would be to paint your floral wire or to find a floral wire color that you're happy with. Now taking the glass candle holder and these round floral foams, I'm gonna hot glue the floral foam down onto the glass candle holder. I'm then going to hot glue down the reindeer moss to the floral foam, covering it completely. Once you hot glue the reindeer moss down, if you take an aerosol hairspray and spray down the reindeer moss, it'll help keep those pieces that didn't get glued down together. So if you move your piece from place to place, you don't have reindeer moss falling off all over the place. Then taking the floral wire that I covered with the wood washi tape, I'm going to place a bit of hot glue on the end of it and push it down through the reindeer moss into the floral foam. I'm going to do this with all of the floral wire sticks that I made, randomly placing them throughout the reindeer moss. Now for the butterflies. Each of the butterflies comes with some sort of a clip or wire. I'm going to remove these. They come off really easily. And I'm going to do this to all of my butterflies. Now taking my hot glue, I'm going to place them on the bottom of the butterfly and place them on the top of the sticks, giving the illusion that the butterfly has just landed on these wood sticks. And I thought the perfect finishing touch to this butterfly spring decor piece would be just a touch of these white baby's breath flowers that the Dollar Tree carries. I picked up one bundle 
I'm gonna remove them from the stem so there's just the flowers. And I'm gonna take and place just a bit of hot glue on the end of the flowers and stick them again through the reindeer moss into the foam. And there you have it. A spring decor piece that is fun and is just a bit different than anything else. For this first DIY, some of Dollar Tree's decorative nautical rope is what you'll need. I'm gonna start off by, I guess, folding the rope in half and making kind of a hoop here, and I'm gonna glue it together just like so. There are a couple different ways that you can do this, but I found that this was the easiest and it made it the most stiff and sturdy, I guess. Along one side of the rope, I'm gonna go ahead and put more hot glue, and yep, I'm just gonna coil this rope just like so. As you coil it, you do wanna put glue um, every so often just to kind of hold it together so it doesn't slip apart. And I'm gonna do this until I've got the size coil or circle that I'm happy with. I've got two more pieces of rope that measure out at about four inches and I'm just gonna hot glue those to the top making some bunny ears. This fat quarter set is by Emma and Myla. It's one that you can find at Walmart. It's got about six different fabrics in it and hands down, it's one of my favorite fabrics to use in my spring DIYs. So I'm gonna take and place the ears of the bunny on a section of the fabric that I want to show through the ears and just taking a pencil, I'm gonna trace it. Now when I cut these ears out, I'm gonna cut out on the inside of the line so that way the fabric doesn't show on the outside of the rope. And I'm just gonna use some hot glue to apply it to the back. The front of this bunny, well, it should be finished off with one of these adorable gingham ribbons that I tied from a ribbon in my stash. Here at the bottom of the bunny, I felt like I needed something to cover up that mess at the bottom, so I got some wired burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and just kind of gathered it there in the center using more of that gingham ribbon to tie it off and just that easily you have a super cute bow that you don't even have to tie and it's gonna be perfect that I'm gonna put there at the bottom. There on the back, I'm gonna take four Jenga blocks, hot glue them so yeah, this bunny can stand on an end table or in my entertainment center, just adding a fun spring decor piece, a neutral spring decor piece. Isn't that cute? I love it. For this DIY, I will be using one of these adorable bunny plaques that you can get from, yeah, Dollar Tree. I loved the head of it. Dollar Tree does have other bunny plaques, but I wanted just the head itself. And so this was perfect for this. I started off by giving it a couple coats of the white chalk paint, but then I realized I had painted it the wrong color. So I fixed my oops with some of Waverly's hazelnut. Now I'm happy. Good to go with using a dry brush stroke technique using some white chalk paint. This is really just gonna kind of help give it that aged, weathered, distressed look. And you can easily achieve that with just putting a minimal amount of paint on a brush. And you see how I'm lightly feathering over, I guess, the plaque itself. I'm also gonna outline the outside of the plaque with the white paint as well, just to give it a more finished look. I am going to go in with a light grade sandpaper just to kind of soften up those brush strokes a bit, blend it in more, and yeah, just kind of age it and distress it a bit more. Digging into my stash of plaques, cause I do have that. When I see a fun plaque that I can repurpose, I typically pick it up and put it in my stash. This breadboard one from this past fall and harvest season, I picked up a few of them because I just love the look of them. On the back side, I'm gonna go in with some of Waverly's hazelnut and give it just one good coating of that. Once that base coat is good and dry, I'm gonna go in with some white glue. I didn't have any white glue, so I dug into Allie's slime kit and pulled some out. I'm gonna put a fair amount of white glue on this plaque. The thicker, the better because this is how I am going to achieve that weathered, crackled look. It is such an easy way to do that. 
using white glue. Now I have used Dollar Tree's jock glue, but I have found with using that glue, I don't get as good of a crackle because it's not as thick. And so I feel like the thicker the glue, the better. Once I've got a real good coating of this glue on my breadboard before the glue dries while it is wet, yes, while the glue is wet, I'm gonna go in with whatever color I want as a top coat. So in this case, it is a white chalk paint by Waverly. Now the look that I'm going for is we did the hazelnut underneath and that's what's gonna come through the crackle, that darker color. So in my opinion, it's always best to start off with your base coat as the darker color that you want to come through your cracks and then do your glue and then do the lighter color. Now, as this glue dries, you are going to see how it crackles. Don't worry about getting perfect coverage with this top coat of paint because one, you're not gonna be able to do that because you're painting over wet glue. And two, it's just gonna add to the more imperfect look that we're going for. So I am going to do a time lapse on this and let you just see how this starts to crackle as the glue. And after about an hour and a half, this is the look we got by using white glue. Isn't that amazing? On the back side of the bunny plaque, I'm gonna add a couple of these square beads just to elevate my bunny head up off of the breadboard because I am all about dimension. I feel like dimension adds character versus just putting the bunny plaque flat onto the breadboard itself just doing something as simple as elevating it up off the background adds so much personality to a DIY. Now to finish this off, I figured I'd finish it off with a fun bright orange flower. This is a paper flower that I had in my stash. These flowers, you can find them at Michael's Hobby Lobby on sale quite often. I really am trying to make a conscious effort of using what I have in my stash instead of adding to it. Um, I've got a lot of great things and so I just feel like I need to use them. And I'm gonna also add some of these lamb tails, lamb tails, oh my goodness, lamb leaves, lamb, what is it, lamb, lamb, oh my goodness, my mind just went blank, lamb ears, I said lamb tails, oh my word. It is officially eight o'clock in the morning here on Saturday morning before I upload this is what I'm doing this voiceover. And so yeah, the lamb ears, add that nice soft green touch that I like to add to spring DIYs. And with that, look at that, my piece is finished. Let's take a look. For this third DIY, four different size beads are needed. These come in a multi-pack by Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. So one pack, you're gonna get to do a lot of this DIY. Using some twine, I'm gonna put just a bit of hot glue there on the bottom of the twine to keep it from fraying. Stiffen it up a bit and that just kind of helps string the beads when doing twine. Quick, easy, right? What a fun little hack. I'm gonna go ahead and string these on from largest to smallest. Gonna tie that twine off on both ends. The top of carrots needs some grassy stems, so I'm gonna use raffia. Raffia is gonna work perfect for this. If you don't have green raffia on hand, Dollar Tree does have green raffia and they've got their grass picks that they come out with in spring in their floral department. That will also work great for this. Again, I'm using what I have in my stash. So I cut a piece that, or a few pieces that are about three inches and I'm just gonna hot glue them there into the top bead. And I made a set of three in the center, I'm gonna finish it off with a coordinating gingham bow and how stinking cute are these to put on, say, a tiered tray. This last DIY is the perfect use for those smaller beads that come in the Crafter Square multi-pack that you just don't know what to do with. Taking 18 of them, I'm gonna string them onto my twine and again, putting a bit of hot glue on there so it doesn't unravel. 
Have you seen these wood rings at Dollar Tree and thought they're cool, but I don't know what to do with them? Well, I'm gonna show you what you can use them for this spring. I'm gonna take that twine that has the 18 beads on it. Before I cut the twine off the spool and shorten it, I'm gonna wrap it around the ring and I'm gonna make a set of bunny ears on the top of this ring. Each bunny ear should have nine beads in it, hence why we needed 18 beads. It's looking cute already, right? Now take in another ring. I'm gonna put just a bit of hot glue there right on the top of the ring. And where I used all that twine to put the ears on, that's where I'm gonna attach the second ring where we can then put our napkin, our fabric napkin or paper napkin. And I'm gonna finish this off with another one of those ging bows. And this is going to make for an adorable napkin ring. A spring and Easter napkin ring. How cute is that, right? Sit. No, sit. Thank you, I love you. So gentle. I love you so much, Fred. Girl. <laughs> You're so gentle. You're such a good girl. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? Well, it's going out to Kelly Andrews, who's bringing to us her recreation of my three St. Patrick's Day plaques. Kelly, I am loving your spin and your twist on them. Thank you so much for sharing your recreation with us today. I don't know that I can pick a favorite, but I will tell you that I am feeling inspired and I am loving the neutral color scheme for spring. If the neutral colors are not for you, these DIYs are super versatile and can be done to suit any decor style just by switching up the colors. If you're looking for more inspiration for DIYing, make sure to click on the video right over here and it'll take you to some of my past favorites. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, you know what I'm gonna say. Stay positive, please, because I sure as heck am trying. Bye for now, everybody.